Hi folks, welcome to the Man Cave. It's cold, wet and windy outside. It's December, the perfect time to build your bird boxes. In this video, we're going to build a bird box or bird house based on the one that you can find on the RSPB website. Here you can see me marking out the wood and then using a tri-square to make sure I get the pieces of wood perfectly square at 90 degrees in the corners that is. The one exception to this is the front sides of the bird box where there's a slope uh, so the water can run off the bird box rather than gather on the top. That will become clear later on. Here you can see me using the tennis saw to cut out the first cut and then some glass paper or sandpaper just to get rid of any splints. The rest of the cuts I do on my bandsaw, but if you don't have a bandsaw you can easily do them with the handsaw like I did earlier. Because I use a different thickness of wood, 18mm as opposed to the 15mm thickness in the plans, uh, there is a discrepancy with the base in that my base is slightly too wide. I also decided that the front should fit in between uh, the wood rather than sit on the front and you can see me here making the adjustments so that the two pieces of wood, the base and the front, will both fit in between the two sides rather than outside the two sides. It will all become clear in a minute when I put it together. The pine that I'm using is quite cheap to buy. It's kiln dried and it's nice and smooth but it is liable to split when you force the screws through. So here I'm pre-drilling the holes where the screws will go to hold the sides together. The, I'm using a 2mm drill bit, I think it is 2.5mm, um, just to take the edge off the forcing of the screws when it goes through later. Screwing it all together can be tricky, so here you can see me putting some screws in the holes, the pre-drilled holes, halfway through. And then I use my hand drill to screw them all together. You can at that stage um, glue them as well if you want to run glue down the sides but with the wood because it's fairly uh, flat it goes together quite nicely and you can see there the, or you could see there the front slotting in between the two sides and then one final adjustment to the base means that that will fit in the bottom as well and uh, by the magic there you go and that will be screwed in place too to hold that in place and again you could glue all the way around the wood which will make it a lot more secure a lot more safe um, I just didn't feel the need on this one the screws have got plenty of strength to hold it together to alleviate this little gap that developed I loosened the screws pressed down and then re-drilled the screws in I did the same on the top and you can see me actually rest on it to give it a bit more weight um, to make sure that those joints are nice and flat when I put the lid on, you can see I mark a little angle out and go away and cut that on the saw. You'll see me mark the angle here, uh, which is a wedge effect so that the, the lid lies flatter against the back plate. Otherwise, you'll have a gap on your back plate and water can run in. And that's there. You can see it's not a perfect angle. I've done that by eye. Um, but when you apply the felt later, it will cover the hole. Once a year you'll need to clear the debris out of your birdhouse. So I'm putting a hinge on the top so that will enable me to get in and out in the autumn time when the birds have moved on and I'll clean it out and put some new straw in ready for the new one to go. Again you can see that I've pre drilled the holes and then this time I'm just placing them in with a screwdriver so that I don't split the wood. As this is the roof it is going to be exposed to the elements and I've got some old green mineral felt that I've recycled off some old rabbit hunches that we took apart and I'm just cutting a rectangle out ready to encase the, the roof to make sure the birdhouse is waterproof. To hold it in place I'm just going to use some galvanised steel uh, nails that are, are quite cheap, you can get them from any DIY merchant. You can see I'm cutting a groove out there to go round the hinge and then folding it over on the corners and using these, uh, I forget the exact name of them, but they're, they're galvanised tacks essentially that are for roofing sections. They'll be in the roofing section of your local DIY store. Once I've placed the two ends on, the um, end by the hinge, I fold it over and then do the other end, making sure that it's nice and tight uh, to stop any air or water getting underneath. I then use a box cutter just to trim the felt along the edge in the corners, which enables me to get an easier fold when I then bend over and nail the side stone like I'm doing here. Once 
Once I've pulled the green mineral felt tight all the way around, the bits that are left over, I use the box cutter again and just go around and trim them. And you can see here I'm trimming the corners first and then I'm using the box cutter to go alongside the edges. And that means that I have a perfect fit all the way around. Now I do a dry fit of the roof to make sure that it fits in place, mark out where the hinge screws will go and again pre-drill them using the 2 2.5mm two drill bit. I then use the same screws that I use to fix the hinge to the roof and fix it to the back plate. I'm going to use a hole saw that I'm holding up here, which is set to 32 millimeters. You will attract birds like nuthatches for this size hole. If you want a smaller bird, like a, a blue tit or a coal tit, then you would go for something like a 28 millimeter hole. Once the hole's been drilled, it's just a case then of tidying it up with some sandpaper. You'll need to do this both inside and outside. Next we need to put some kind of mechanism in place to stop the bird box being opened by squirrels and other um, animals that might want to have a look inside the box to see what kind of food there is. And I'm screwing on two of the hooks which I just held up to the camera and a spring. Now this solution probably costs 15-20 pence for the spring with the two um, the things you pay a lot more than that for a latch. The roof does fit quite snug on the top because I've pushed it up, but I then put another piece of green mineral felt over the top as you can see there, just to make sure that no water can get behind in the driving wind. The softwood pine won't last long outside, so I'm using exterior water-based paint, and I'm going to paint just the outside of the bird box. I'm not even going to paint the inside of the hole that goes into the bird box. I'm taking off the spring here so that I don't get any paint on it and you can see me gradually work my way around with the paint. It's important that it's water-based because you don't want to have any toxic effects on the birds that are nested in the birdhouse. So I'm just working my way around making sure that it's watertight with this exterior paint. I take care to go around all the way and make sure that I cover all the areas that you can see if you're looking up at it from the bottom of the tree or from in the garden. You can see they are painted underneath the, uh, the roof but I'm not going to paint inside the box for the reasons that I stated earlier. Here you can see the finished uh, bird box, bird house, spring on the top to stop any predators getting inside, giving enough resistance there to stop it and if you need to get in Take the spring off and then just try and get some light in there you've got access inside the bird box to clean it out once a year like i said in the video earlier if you want to make these joints especially strong uh, then you can do so by running some glue down the inside when you come to screw them together now this bird box is pretty much designed by the rspb i'll put a leaflet for the measurements that you can use inside the liner notes underneath the video. Here's a similar one that I made as a way of testing it out. You can see I've got the spring on the side. Because the front or goes onto the front of the sides rather than inside the sides, you get that lip. If you can see that angle, don't know how well it's showing, but it comes down and then comes out. So that the lid, when it closes, closes on the front rather than on the side. So I extended the green mineral felt to cover any drafts on that one, but if you place it inside, like I have there, you won't have that problem. You can also see the difference in the hole size, although it's only 4mm on the diameter, it does make quite a difference and you will get an entirely different uh, species of bird. I mean, you might get the smaller birds in this, um, I'm not sure, it depends on how secure they are. This bird box is designed to attract robins, robins like it open fronted. As long as you've got uh, a depth there of, I think it's 100 millimetres, which is about 4 inches, then the baby birds won't fall out, basically, and the robins can head in and out. 
Because the inside is exposed though, more exposed on this, I have painted the sides inside to help keep out the weather. Other than that, it's exactly the same as the other two. There are three bird boxes side by side. It'd be interesting to see if the bird boxes work in the garden and I do attract the kind of birds that I'm after. I'll probably do an update in a few months time after the spring once the birds have started nesting and have chosen their new homes for the next year. Thanks for watching this video folks. Catch you again soon.